everybody, my name is Grace Lana Momotu Kerr, and I will be giving a short sermon. <laughs> Today's encouragement is, on, is an extension of what my siblings spoke about today, and the scripture is Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Guarding our hearts from a spiritual perspective means for us to be alert the power of Christ within us to what enters and dwells in our hearts. Another translation, it determines the course of your life, so, so guard your heart. If we think about some of the pain we've gone through, we can see that most of our problems come from people we're interacting with. The Lord means for us to guard our hearts by filtering our emotions our desires, our thoughts, and responses through his words. A lot of our issues we have in life is because we didn't protect our hearts. All the things we deal with, such as unforgiveness, bitterness, anxiety, and frustration, is because we allow, our, our, we allow ourselves to infect, infect our hearts to where we can't move forward because we're so affected. But as believers, we need to take inventory on what we allow to enter into our hearts and remove what doesn't belong in there. Our hearts is the gateway, a doorway of a whole being. Everything flows from it. Our love for God and people flows from it. The heart here refers to your mind, your will, or your inner mind. Your heart or mind is the control center of your life. Every decision you make in life results from a choice you make in your mind. As it says in James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desires have conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death. James is talking about the progression that leads to sin. This is the similar progression that leads to every choice you make. It begins with a thought or desire in your heart or mind and then grows, grows from it. Something, sometimes the process occurs over an extended period and in others. It can happen quickly. Regardless, your mind is at the center of controlling your decisions. How we guard our hearts and minds the Lord, through his word, is the guard, shield, and protector of our hearts. We must pray and store up God's word. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, it says, You will keep in him perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. When you store up God's word in your heart, the spirit will remind you of it in your time that you need to guard your mind. Guard your heart with godly thoughts, focus on godly thoughts, and seek his wisdom and guidance from God. Guard your heart with a clean heart. Ask God to create a clean heart in you and renew a steadfast spirit. Guard your heart with a good heart, and a good man brings forth good for the good treasure of his heart. And lastly, Guard your heart with a healthy relationship with God. Your heart has a significant impact on your relationship with God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. Uh, my name is Josiah Ponga. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to just uh, give all the glory to God for his faithfulness in my life that I'm able to stand before all of you today. I'd also like to thank Pastor and First Lady and my youth leaders, their family and friends for just giving me this opportunity to share the word this morning. Uh, my title of my sermon this morning is Influence. Church, today I want us to reflect on the story from the Gospel of Luke. It's a passage that shows us the amazing power of Jesus, but just as importantly, it shows us the significance of those we allow into our lives. The people who walk with us, pray with us, and even carry us when we cannot walk on our own. If you have your Bibles with you today, please turn to Luke chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. If not, it'll be up on the screen, so please follow along as I read. It reads, One day Jesus was teaching, 
and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from, Je from, from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the city. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house and lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up onto the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Church, who do you allow to influence your life? Are they leading you closer to Jesus or are they pulling you away from him? Today, you will see and hear how the faith and determination of the paralyzed man's friends teach us about the importance of the company we keep and how the people in our lives can either lift us up towards God's grace or hold us back from his blessings. Now, I'll be talking about two points about this story, which leads me to my first point. What type of friends do you have? See, reading this story over and over again made me realize my life choices and friends. And not only that, but I'm always reminded about those who I let in my circle and this saying that says, we are who we surround ourselves with. <clears throat> now, as I talk to you all about this, it's not only an encouragement for you, but it's also for me because it's something I'm going through as well. Now, in the book of Luke, the verses 17 through 19, we see that the paralyzed man's friends were determined to bring him to Jesus. When they saw the crowd and realized they couldn't get into the door, they, they didn't turn back or lose hope. Instead, they found another way. They went up to the roof, removed the tiles, and lowered their friend right in front of Jesus. You see, it's important to understand the strength of these men's faith. Their faith was persistent. They refused to give up. And because of their faith, the paralyzed man was placed in the presence of the one who could change his life forever. See, some of us are the paralyzed man. Not, necessar not necessarily saying we are paralyzed, but some of us are paralyzed spiritually. Meaning some of us are stuck spiritually. Which leads me back to my first point. What type of friends do you have? Do you have friends that will go above and beyond and lead you to Christ? Friends that will uplift you in moments of need? See, the people we allow into our lives can either help us get closer to Jesus or discourage us when things get tough. Church, I want you to surround yourself with those who will carry you when you cannot walk. And with those who will push you to seek Christ in every situation of your life. In verse 20 it says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Notice something here. Notice something important here, church. Jesus first addressed the man's spiritual need before healing his physical condition. He forgave his sins. The faith of the man's friends opened the door not only for healing, but for salvation. In our lives, the people we associate with can either lead us to spiritual healing and growth or leave us stuck in our struggles. Just as these friends brought their loved ones to Jesus, we need people who will bring us into the presence of God. We need people who will remind us of his grace, who will pray for us when we are weak, and who will challenge us to seek his forgiveness and his love. But not only should you have friends that will do this, but you as well should be that friend. Which leads me to my final point. What type of friend are you? Church, in your own personal lives, are you the type of friend that leads others towards Jesus? Or leads them away. See, we all want friends like the paralyzed man had. People who will stick by us. Believe for us when we're weak. And bring us to Jesus. But today I encourage you not just to want those type of friends. But to be that friend. Be the friend who prays without ceasing. Be the friend who speaks life and hope into difficult situations. Be the friend who lifts others when they cannot lift themselves. See, it may, not be, it may not be easy. It may involve tearing through some roots in life. But the reward is seeing lives changed, hearts healed, and souls saved. The faith of these friends was so powerful that it moved Jesus to act. Now imagine how your faith and friendship could do the same for those you love. Church, be that friend. In, the, in John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. If you don't know what a faithful friend looks like, 
here to remind you that we have the best example of a friend who gave his life so that we could live in freedom. His name is Jesus. Now as we reflect from this from the story from Luke chapter 5, let us be reminded of the power of faith and the importance of the people we allow into our lives. The paralyzed man was healed because of the faith and determination of his friends. Church, I want us to commit today to surround ourselves with the people of faith and people will help us grow in Christ. Let us also commit to being those kinds of friends for others, willing to go the extra mile, willing to carry others that they cannot carry themselves, willing to tear, willing to tear through some roots if that's what it takes to bring someone to Jesus. May we always be mindful of the company we keep and may our faith be so strong that it brings others into the presence of the one who forgives, heals, and restores. In Jesus' name, amen.